Hi, welcome to the big data demos for Hadoop on Azure. This is about the product analytics. Online retail market has seen phenomenal growth in the recent years, which is not going to abate in the next couple of decades. Forrester Research estimates that consumers spent more than $60 billion online shopping during the holiday season for the year 2011. And more and more Americans are planning to shop online than go down to the neighborhood mall. This phenomenal growth brings in a lot of challenges for online marketers. They now need sophisticated technologies to compete and stay ahead of the competition. Big Data Analytics holds the answer and can help online marketers to compete effectively by better understanding user behavior and their activity patterns. Company Health is Wealth is a large online retailer with thousands of healthcare products in its online catalog. The big boss at Health is Wealth is under pressure to compete with other large online retailers. The big boss would mainly like to look into these areas, product pages and checkout pages. We will start by performing a clickstream analysis using big data technologies. This analysis will give us a better understanding of how users engage with product pages and what percentage of this engagement actually results in a sale. For this, we need to have access to the site's session log files. You will see that the session log files are W3C compliant. You will find the date, the time, the cookie ID of the user, the product page where they have landed, and the referring URL. For performing the big data analytics, we need access to some Hadoop clusters. Let's go to hadoop.azure.com to get our own Hadoop clusters. This is the page where we could request a new cluster. Let's make the cluster size large. We also need to create login credentials to the Hadoop cluster. Then we just click on this button to create our cluster. And voila, our cluster allocation is in progress. Now that we have our Hadoop cluster, let's start working on it. Let's go to the interactive console. Now that we are on the interactive console, let's create a directory where we can upload the session log file. For this, we use the command mkdir. Let's check to see if the directory was created. Yes, the directory was created. Now, let's put the session log file into this directory. For that, we use the file system command put. We select the file and upload it to the directory that we just created. The file was uploaded. Let's check if the file was uploaded. Yes, the file was uploaded at the right directory. We now need to create the MapReduce job that will work on the session log file. Our MapReduce job named session extractor would process the W3C compliant web block file and produce these outputs. The session ID, user ID, session start time, timestamp, page visited, and the time spent on each page visited. For that, let's click on the style called create job. We need to upload the appropriate jar file for this particular MapReduce job. Now that we have uploaded the jar file, let's give the job a name. The name of the base class that works. The destination from where to pick up the session log file. And the output directory. Adding all this creates a final Hadoop command. Now that we have the final Hadoop command, let's execute the job. 
the job and started to run. The MapReduce job was successfully completed. Let's make sure that the MapReduce job has created an output file. That should be in the output directory, session 1. Yes, the MapReduce job has created the output file. We are now on the interactive Hive console. We give this command to create the Hive table. Our Hive table is now created. In the Hive table created, you will notice that it is partitioned by the visit date. We see that the session info table was created with the columns for session ID, the user ID, the visit time where the user came on the page, the URL, the time spent on the page, and of course the partition column with a date. Let's upload the output of the MapReduce job into the Hive table that we just created. For this, we use the load data command. Now, the data is in the Hive table. Let's make sure that the data is there. Let's do a simple select star. So we see that the data has been uploaded into the Hive table. Now that we know that our data is in the Hive tables, we want to export it out to Excel spreadsheets and SharePoint servers. For that, the first thing that we have to do is to make sure that our ports are open. So we click on this tile and click on the toggle buttons to close to open the ports for both ODBC server and FTPS. We also have to download the ODBC drivers and the Hive add-in for Excel. We click on this download tile to get the ODBC Hive driver and the Hive add-in for Excel. Now that we have downloaded the Hive ODBC drivers, we need to create a data source. Come to the administrative tools panel and double click on the data source item and add a Hive data source. Select Hive from this list. Give the data source name a unique name, something that you will remember by. The host name should be the same name as what you had given for the cluster for the username it should be the access username for the cluster and off we go so we have successfully created a hive data source now let's open up our excel spreadsheet in the Excel spreadsheet, click on the data tab. In that, you'll find now a Hive pane. Clicking on it, we see a Hive connection. This is the recent data source that we just created. Enter the username and password that you used for accessing your Hadoop cluster. And voila, you are connected to the Hive tables and this is the table in which we had uploaded some data. If you select that table, it shows all its columns on which now you could query. To execute a sample query, let's select the session ID and maybe the user ID. You would see in the HiveQL pane, the HiveQL is shown here. 
this is based on what we had selected in the column names for the sake of simplicity let's limit it to the top 10 now click on the button execute query and now the data is being fetched from your hive table te session demo there you go we see the session id and the user id that we just pulled from the hive table te session demo so that's how we can connect our excel spreadsheets to get data out of a hive table and on top of which we could perform all our analytics now that the data is in excel we can do a lot of analytics on top of it we are currently seeing a product analytics dashboard which has the daily key performance indicators we understand about the urls and the users who are coming to our website now let's take a look at the pivot chart one of the most popular chart is the most popular URLs of the month. This chart has the sum of time spent by every user over various URLs for the month of March. From this chart, we understand that track order page has been the most popular URL of the month where people come back to track their orders. People have also been searching for toxin cleansers and multivitamins so is allergies it's equally important for us to understand the urls that are least popular on our site we find that these following five product pages are not popular on our site this graph tells us that this product page should be redesigned so that people can spend more time on these pages in addition to the pivot charts we also have power view reports in this report, we can see on a daily basis which are the most popular URLs of the day, who are the most active users of the day, the sticky URL of the day. We could scroll by across various days and find these graphs for each one of those days of the month of March. Here we have a bubble chart that shows the time spent by users over various URLs of the site. Playing the recorder. We see that the user spent anywhere between 400 to 445,000 seconds over 516 to 519 URLs of the site in the month of March. The other dashboard that we have shows us the time spent by the users in the month of March. This shows the time spent by users per URL basis. These analytics gives the online retailer great powers. They now understand how users interact on the website, from where do they come from, what do they do, and what's the most likely path that they could probably make a buy. Using this knowledge, they can get more conversions on the site and thereby increase the revenues of the site. Big Data Analytics saves the day. Thank you for watching the Big Data Demos for HadoopAnalysia.com.